I'll see this now. Um, so, welcome to the Dragons Voice Podcast, Episode Three. I am here with former Cardiff City Cardiff City player, uh, New. Well, wait a minute. Didn't you play for Newport late? Or am I getting it mixed up then? It was Swansea. Oh, well, wasn't it? Yeah, I did. I played for all three. I played. All three. Yeah, not many people know that. I, I played a couple of games for Swansea and about a handful for Newport. Yeah. Yeah, but you started your career with Liverpool, didn't you? Yeah. That- so I. I started my career with Liverpool. I was signed to them when I was nine years old. Oh, nine? Uh, yeah, I, I grew up in North Wales, and uh, my old man used to take me on a on a Wednesday evening to start off with, and a, and then a game on a Sunday. And uh, oh, yeah. our our youth team was pretty special because um, the same changing room as Stephen Jarrod, Michael Owen, Stephen Wright all went on to um, to be Premiership players. So. Didn't that Kumas, wasn't he part of the squad as well? Or? Yeah, Jason was there from the age of nine till about fifteen, but he didn't get offered um he didn't get offered an apprenticeship. So he went to Tranmere then. Oh, because you hear obviously when when football when football and journalism come together, sometimes it's not a pretty good mixture because I heard a lot of stories. I know that Jason can be very a very private person. Um, but I heard he just wasn't interested in the first team. That's why he went to Tranmere. But that, that, you know what? No, that's... so no. I mean, our our youth team was quite frightening at that time. Um, Jason was always you could tell he was going to be a top player, but he was like he won't mind me saying now. I mean, because I still got on with Jason to this day. But I used to play with him on a Sunday as well for for a Sunday for a Sunday league side. Oh yeah, myself, Stevie G, Andy Moran, Jason. Yeah, we hey golf United. We used to play all together on Sunday. But I don't know, something just, I, I don't think his face fitted with the coaches or something like that. Um, he was, he's, he was a bit, it come across with his body language, he was a bit lazy. But the things, oh. he, the things he could do with the ball, obviously you've witnessed it first time when he was at Cardiff. You know, he was unreal. But um, he was competing with a set in midfield spot against Steven Gerrard. So that's probably, probably why he just, he didn't fight as hard as he could for, for pushing on at Liverpool. And he, and he went, he went to um, Tramir in the end. So with you then, it you got uh, an offer to go into the senior squad. Uh, how many did you play a lot of games for Liverpool, or was it just a couple yeah, of games? So, well, I mean, I was there from nine years old. Blah blah blah. Went all the way through schoolboy football with Liverpool. Then um, at the end of like the under fifteen season, you get told whether they're going to keep you on and go full time. So, obviously, I was one of the lucky ones. Um, joined the Liverpool Academy then. The Academy had just opened in Kirby. So, my day-to-day training was at the Academy. And I was there for uh, 18 months. Um, Stephen Jarrod and Stephen Wright were the first two out of my age group to get the call to go and train with the first team. And as soon as they went there, they stayed with them. And I was a bit later. It was probably six months later I joined them. Um, lucky enough. Got into a few first team squads. Um, Jared Houllier came on board then, uh, which I, I love. Like I love Jared Houllier and I loved his his assistant Patrice. They they brought a different aspect to training, all heart rate monitors. Um, some of the training sessions they put on were, were outstanding. Um, but I was lucky enough to make my debut in um, in the second leg of the Worthington Cup. It was called back then, which is which is the League Cup now. And then at Anfield, and all my mates were there watching. Mum and Dad came down, and I managed to score. Um, yeah, so I didn't really get any playing time after that. I got a few few appearances on from the bench, but playing time, no. I mean, a lot of foreigners came and signed then that summer. I went on loan then to Stockport County for a season, um, which I was I was good. We stayed up in the old Division One, and then that summer then I had a few options. I could have stayed at Liverpool. Probably would have had a season in reserves again, but my agent at the time was pushing me to go and play football. Um, so um, I signed for Cardiff in the end. So when, how, about. yeah. So how did the transaction came about then? How, how did the how did the offer to go and play for Cardiff City uh, transpired then? Well, at the time, I mean, you probably remember, or you, certainly your old man will. Sam, my man was throwing money left, right and centre, trying to get Cardiff up to yeah. up to as high as possible, really. I mean, um, so that summer then, I had, two, I had two good games for Wales and 21s. 
we played um, Poland at the Vetch, I think, and we played someone at Merthyr. And I, I, I done really well in the two games. I know, <laughs> to be honest, I was very close to signing uh, St. Johnson in Scotland. Oh, right. Because, yeah, so they obviously, they win, they would just come up to the Premiership. So, you know, two games against Celtic and Rangers every season and, and all the TV coverage at the time that Scotland were getting. My agent was tr- was trying his best to get me up there. But then last minute, I remember coming back from a holiday. Um, last minute, my, my agent, George, phoned me. He said, look, we've had Cardiff on the phone. I'd heard that they'd been interested because I knew a few of the boys like Gabs and Lee Kendall. And Ernie, I, I, I'd heard rumours that they were, they were, they were after, after me, if you like. And then mm. uh, we went down there and then they, they pretty much blew everyone out of the water, really. Yeah, money wise, and I, I knew Cardiff as well because I'd been down with Wales and knew I'd like it there, so I signed there. That's how it happened. So, when you were playing for Cardiff City, you were, of course, playing with the likes of Andy Legg, Robert Earnshaw, Danny Gabadon, Peter Thorne you know, those players who have gone on to become uh, culturally one of the, the best names in, in Cardiff City football club history. And I was doing some research. I was looking up uh, your career path, and it says you won a, a few uh, achievements and honours with Cardiff City. Uh, they said that um, it, you won the FAW Premier Cup, which is in the early 2000s. And, of, and of course, today is the, I don't know how many years now, but it's the anniversary of the, the playoff victory at uh, Millennium Stadium. That's but, right, at that yeah. time, but at that time, because um, you were around the era, of course, with Sam and Mam, um, did you, was you on the bench? Did you play uh, so, against? No, so, no. So I'd, I'd made my most appearances for the club at that season. Um, mm. But I got injured about a month to go of the season. And literally, um, I remember Lenny pulling me actually. So I got myself, I got myself back fit, ready for, for the playoffs and the, obviously the playoff final, thinking I'd have a chance. And um, he went with Jason Bowen on the bench instead of me. So, oh. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was a bit gutted. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't fully fit anyway, um, coming back from a hamstring injury. Um, but I, I certainly took part in the celebrations that night, yeah. Yeah, well, everyone could take part in the celebrations. I mean, everyone would love it, you know. Did you play yeah. against the Leeds? Was you part of the squad against the I was Leeds? on the bench against Leeds. I was an new sub. I was gutted I didn't get on. I think I was pat- pestering Butterworth for the last 20 minutes. Get me on, get me on. Because obviously mm. Dominic Matteo and Robbie Farlow were playing for Leeds. So, yeah. you know, I wanted to get on to play against them more than anything else. Um, but yeah, I was good to didn't get on. But um, yeah, that was a special, that was another special evening at Cardiff. Was it tense? Because uh, obviously a lot of people are going to say, yeah, it, it sounds more of a talk of question. But that happened to be a very tense night because every time I mentioned it to my dad, now he, he went to watch the game and he was in the Bob Bank and he yeah. just said it. He's never yeah. been so scared at a football match in his life. And yeah. you wouldn't think of that. And for my dad, just because he's always bubbly, he's always, you know, yeah. the jack, um, jack the lads and everything. But when he said, I've never been so frightened to go to a game, it was unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, it really was. I mean, the old Ninian part for me was special anyway. But um, where we used to warm up, you used to run down past our fans and then, you know, get applauded or what have you. And then you'd stay in the corner and all the Leeds fans would be giving you abuse. But then our fans have a go back at them. And then obviously you had the famous Sam walking around the pitch towards the end when we were winning. And that just kicked everything off. That just kicked See, off. Like the, 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 when you were doing the warming ups and you saw, you know, technically you're then boss just walking around going, what the oh, freaking yeah. doing? Well, that, was, that was Sam. He did it for a reason. He did it for a reaction and he got it. I mean, you know, it's, it's it goes down in folklore that that mm. that day against Leeds, doesn't it? So he knew what he was doing. He likes to be the centre of attention for Sam. Yeah. Um. So in two thousand and three, I think it was your your first spell. And at the whole point of the podcast, I wanted to be all Welsh football orientated, so it doesn't necessarily to be about my biased approach to Barry Town. But you had a loan uh, offer to go and play for Barry Town in two thousand and three. Is that Correct or I think uh, well what it was I was I was struggling with my back and my hamstrings and I was going to see a specialist in um, Gobowin in Osmond Street every few weeks to, to see what was going on. Um, I wasn't playing at Cardiff at the time. He, Lenny Lenny was brought in a few players. Like, I was down the pecking order mainly through my injuries. I think Lenny did like me as a player. 
but I just couldn't get that run of four, five, six games. I remember coming in for two or three and doing really well while Kavanaugh was suspended or Willie had not be missing. Um, but I couldn't really get that run of like 10, 15 games, which you need. And uh, yeah, I was struggling with injury. Um, I, 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 I arranged the settlement through George, my agent with Cardiff. And I was a free, a free agent, really. But I just wanted to play some football toward, between then and the end of that season. And um, I think I did, I did sign for Barry. I think Stixie was David Hughes, was manager. And the Barry chairman, I remember meeting the Barry chairman at one of the sports, um, the sports gyms, a sporter in Cardiff, Stuart Lovering at the time. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you pro, are you pro, I was in, I was in, I'd just been in the gym and I was in the jacuzzi and this guy gets in. Like, you know, he's a bit, he's a bit eccentric, isn't he, with his curly hair? And, he's, and he was looking at me, and I was like, you're right, mate? And he was just like, Maxwell, isn't it? I thought I'd find you here. And then he leant over, Stuart Lovering, Barry. That's how it happened. And oh. literally, literally, he was just, he was literally trying to... Oh. And it, was the most, it was the most strangest thing you'd ever see, but that's how it happened. And then straight away, he went, look, David says that you possibly could... Because we, they were desperate to stay up. Yeah, and he approached. That's how he approached me. That's how he approached me. So it's the most it's really weird, sad story I've ever heard coming no. from. See, the, the things I've heard, just being a supporter of of my club of my club and everything, and I've heard wacky stories left, right, and center about the guy. That just tops it off because oh, I, no. that, just, I... that just simply defines what he was as an owner and as a. A, a businessman. I had to literally put quotations as a businessman. <laughs> oh my lord! It just, really, it was just really so random. And I'm, my mates bounced in the gym then after me. He's my best mate, Gary Twine. And he's boy, he's bounced in, and he went, "Who was that guy?" I went, "I don't know, but I've just signed for Barry for three months." <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, can you get me again? I was like, "He yeah. <laughs> couldn't get anyone again." Well, oh, man, at, at that time, you know, it's like. But the whole point of going into that era, I think it was David Hughes, or it could have been another manager, but I think it was Hughesy. He turned around, and I think it was one of the uh, poor performances against Port Talbot or something like that, and he called it a dog and duck uh, a game or an era, whatever he called it, and it was just bizarre. Yeah. You know, how can it how can it go far? He was a strange guy. I mean, yeah. You know, I don't know how he fell into being at that club with the chairman, being a chairman at that club. I don't know. Don't know the yeah. ins and outs of it, but he don't belong in football. No, well, we're in European football now, so it's all good. <laughs> it's all good now, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So after Cardiff City, you're bouncing to a few clubs. You go to Swansea City. Yeah. Um, you play a few games. You say you got um, gone to Newport County. You went to Mansfield for a bit. But it was really, you started getting regular game time up in North Wales with the likes of Real, Carnarvon and Bangor. Yeah. What was the... What was your time like uh, at North Wales? Okay, so I was I, I, bouncing around football clubs is probably the right term. I mean, I just couldn't I couldn't physically stay fit for longer than three or four games. But my body just wouldn't do it. And it turned out I had an abnormality of my L something on my back. I've got a report. Anyway, it was it was good enough to get official retirement from being a professional footballer at the time. So what it was, my hamstrings kept on tearing <coughs> when I was sprinting and I was quite a dynamic, fast player. Um, still get back problems to this day. Luckily enough, it don't affect my golf. That's why I'm red. I've been playing golf today. <laughs> but yeah, I bounced around. I decided to go and go back to North Wales. I was, I was with a Cardiff girl at the time. She came with me. I decided to go back up there, look into playing um, part-time football and maybe start learning learning a different career path because that's you know that's that's life and um my uncle's best one of my uncle's best mates was chairman at real he said look come and play for us started working for my uncle and that's how it went on um started off had a good had a good 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 year year with real i think we won the league that season i tailed off towards the end obviously injured again um Signed for Bangor City then with Clayton. Pete and Davenport signed me first. Um, and Clayton took over. But do you know what? My best time up there was with Carnarvon Town. Yeah. 
Um, I signed. I signed uh, and with all the rep, the Repsom old boys, Lee Jones, Watkin, Matthews. I had a really good time with them. And then Steve O'Shaughnessy took over. I think I had two two decent seasons with Carnarvon, and we were lucky really not to not to make the top top two or three that season because we were good enough. I remember beating TNS away three nil. Oh, do you know what? It's any anyone who could beat TNS, right? Whatever it's back then or now, it's so satisfying. It's satisfying now that it is. Yeah, yeah. It's so I mean, satisfying to to beat. It's like Connors Keane. I know. I've always expressed a lot of distaste towards Connors Keane, not the fact of the the state of the club or whatever. And I've got a lot of respect for Andy Morrison as a manager and everything because he's just a nutcase, and I I, I love it because he's he's just a big oh, character. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's like with TNS, they're the kind of club that just. I always says it puts a shame on football because they run a monopoly, not a football business or whatever. Yeah. And to and whenever whatever club beats them, I'm like, yes, go on, kick yeah. it. I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, it comes down to one guy who had a dream, who had money, and he was brave enough to put his money in. Um, yeah. So I've got respect for him in in that way, but they in that you know TNS did change Welsh football for a good few years. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, um, they put they put the Welsh Premier League on the map, so to you know. Um, nowadays, you know, you have there's a lot more teams progressing and getting, competing with them, scratching and clawing more, like just trying to get on the level of TNS now. Would you say? Yeah, I'd say so. I, I mean, I mean Barry, they Barry Barry qualified for for Europe again. I mean, Connors Key won the league, so maybe. Maybe the year is over. We don't know. I mean, someone said to me they're relying on Champions League money now, TNS. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen going forward. What is it? Oh, the neck. Right. So Carnarvon, I, I know at the time when you were playing for Carnarvon Town, um, you said you had a couple of good seasons, two seasons with, with the club. But at, at that time, they were struggling off the field. There was a, apparently financial troubles. There was a yeah. few... Yeah, it was it to be to be honest. It was one man on his own. He was a farmer, a wealthy farmer. Um, George, I got I forgot his second name. Really good bloke, top top. But the, but the people behind the scenes at, at Carnarvon kept that club going, and you know it, it makes me happy today when I look back and they see and see him doing so well. And the same when when they see the the people in the background after victories, it's all the same people when I used to be there. You know, some really good people up there, and. Um, yeah, the the Oval is quite a special special place, especially in the Derby games against Bangor. Yeah, 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 really good. Um, so after Carnarvon, you bounced to you, you came back down south. You played for Aberaman, or now they're called Aberdare. Yeah, uh, you came back to Barry, and that was around about the time when you came back to Barry it was in two thousand and ten, maybe or two thousand nine, two thousand ten, and that was around about the same year I started supporting Barry Town, mm-hmm. uh, and I think I think that was when I first met you then. You know, but I was only a kid, you know, so yeah. Um, had a couple a of, I know I look way <laughs> different now. All the hair is just coming out and all yeah, sorts man. of places. Nuts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now my missus is having a laugh. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> so after Barry Town, it seemed a bit, seemed a bit bleak then uh, for some yeah. people, because when when you left Barry. Some of us wondered where you had gone afterwards. Someone said you went to Cardiff Corinthians. Some said you went to Ponty Pre. Some said you went to this club, that club. You know what was so? What was that gap? Can you fill us in? What happened? Yeah, after I that? mean, I mean, I that season, Gav gave me a call out of the blue. I weren't going to play anymore. I weren't going to play because it was playing on a Saturday was affecting my my golfing life on a Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah. So I was after games, my back would be in bits. So I wasn't going to bother. Um, but obviously, because of Gav, Gav's top man, I've known Gav for quite a long time. And um, yeah, I, I, I give him a good season up. Well, was it 2010 that was it? Did you say, Reese? Yeah, yeah, 2010. Yeah, there some good boys there. I mean, Sadler was there, um, Daniel Clare, Blatchford. It was, there's some yeah. good boys there. They really enjoyed it. And obviously playing on Jenner Park, it's my in on that league that we were in at the time, it was just different class, like a carpet, so it suited me really well. But then af- after that season, I think I just I think I just knocked it on the head, to be honest. And yeah, 
again the next season starts then and I wasn't going to play for anyone and you get a phone call and you think oh go on then I'll, I just couldn't say no that that's the way I was but my body just physically couldn't take football I mean I join in with the boys at the drafts now in training and I'm I'm struggling on a Thursday morning I think that's, all the boys are struggling aren't they <laughs> I know I know but I've, I've I've got a glass back now and I, I'd rather just keep it safe with my golf because yeah. I'm I'm, I, I love golf more than football at the yeah. moment. No, that's fair enough, man. I mean, I'm not a golf person, but, you know, I wouldn't mind <laughs> swinging a couple and then just uh, having a good time, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the social what, thing what you, in it as well, you know? Yeah. So what is it with football and golf then? It's a lot of footballers who just take up golf all of a sudden. It's, yeah. What is I'm, it? I used to think, like, if you didn't play golf in your spare time when, when I was football, I thought, oh, you must be weird. But, um, yeah, most most guys, it's, it's a good... It's a good I don't know. It's a good downtime thing. You switch off and mm. watch you're on the golf course. You know, you just think about golf and nothing else. I think, I think that that's good for the for the mind and the soul. Of golf. It's like a it's a peaceful game. You know, just to yeah. chill out, relax. You know, yeah. Yeah, and just I, yeah, I, everything. Yeah, I wish I my granddad got me into golf, but I wish I started golf much mm. younger than I did. I think I started playing about twelve, thirteen, something like that. But. Um, yeah, I still can't get into single figure handicaps. <laughs> so, Carla Drax, let's get down to it. Um, I would say this is my other local team because I used to live in uh, Cabalfa. Yeah. Uh, and my dad, being a Cabalfa boy himself, you know, he used to play for the Drax. Um, some of the names I got to mention because my dad is just non stop saying, you got to mention them, you got to mention some of these guys. It's like Matthew Hennessy, Dave Prance, you know. Um, Driscoll, Mark, uh, Mark Davis, Barry Gunstone, you know, all these guys, you know, who have yeah, been I mean, coming every name that you mentioned, Every name that you mentioned then was literally have all been over to the football pitch in the last, what, couple of weeks with the weather, been having a couple of cans, social distancing, of course. Yeah. Um, Prancy's been there. Nicky Driscoll's the secretary of the club. Matthew Hennessy comes to most home games if Cardiff are not playing, brings his little mm. boy Archie. Mark Davis is on the committee. Um, who else have you met? Oh, Barry Gunstone. Okay, so Barry was on Gabalfa. Um, he's moved down Port Fourway now, I think. Um, oh, he's moved to Port Fourway, is he? Yeah, yeah. I think well, he's, his, his children are still in Gabalfa, so we, we still see him. Um, obviously, he's a he's a Drax legend because uh, mm. I think he's up there with one of the best players that's played for the Drax, apparently. Although he, yeah. never, played, he never played for me. Um, <laughs> but like I said, it's because of Barry, because I play with Barry at Ponty, that... that I got to know a few of those people that you mentioned. and Andrew Pillar lived near me at the time. And I actually played a few games for the Drax through Barry and Andrew. Um, that's how it all started. That's how I met some of the committee guys. And then the summer then, I had a phone call off the, off the chairman or the secretary for a meet. Will I come down? Um, do I fancy doing it? And it was just it, it was just at the right time for me because I just split with my missus. And I was pretty bored most weekends. And, uh, yeah, that's how I got back into it. You know, with Carter Drax, I remember growing up and watching and watching the Drax play. And, you know, I remember, you know, likes of Liam Williams as well, um, who's still a player for the Drax and everything. And um, I just remember watching the Drax as a just an, a local pub team, as I used to think about it back in the day. But now, looking at the club now, uh, it seems to be that you want to, this, this club wants to be pushing and just climbing, scratching and clawing to get into the Welsh League division because at the moment it's in the South Wales Alliance division. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Kind well, of funny enough, that's Liam Williams just uh, WhatsApping me. It's funny that you <laughs> just mentioned him, his name, isn't it? Yeah. He, well, um, I'll start on Willow first. He's the club captain now. Mm. He does he does so much for the club on and off the pitch. Um, lucky to have him. Really lucky. He, I think when I signed him, he was my key signing. Mm. And then I thought others others would follow, and they have. Uh, yeah, so we're pretty lucky to, to have him. Luckily, I worked with him at the time at the same company. So that's okay. how, yeah, so that's how, obviously he's a Cabalfa boy anyway, um, but that's how um, me and Liam, that's how I got Liam to be a Drax player, yeah? Um where the club is now, I agree. When I when I first took over, it was it was like pub football, to be honest. You know, tr training was terrible. Three or four turn up at a time, 
and then you'd have 20 turning up on a Saturday. Um, that's how it was. It, we've changed it all around now. Um, obviously, I don't know if you've been down there, but we've the club has invested in um, the facilities, as in the pitch itself has been caged off. We've got 120 seater stand now put in, and it's all done. This weekend, everyone's been mucking in, putting stone around the pitch because we've got to uh, fit the regulations of the Welsh or the South S S South Wales FA to have a path around the pitch. I couldn't hear what you said. I don't know what that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so things are looking good for the club at the time, and to be honest. Um, for the last five seasons, our second half of the season is when I get it right, as in the team selection, because I think we our, our win ratio second half of the season for the last five years has been better than anyone else's. And I really fancied us to go on and progress and win the league this year. Uh, yeah. So we're a bit gutted that has happened. That's life. Um, I don't think there's any announcements yet, as in promotions and everything, but on points per game, we finished second, even though we've only played the top, uh, the bottom three clubs once, where everyone else has played them twice. So, I don't see how that's fair, but it is what it is. You know, yeah, it's strange, cool. strange times at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I think everyone was gutted, because we just started hitting form as well. So, Yeah, so the plan is now, is just to get everything up to scratch, everything up in order, everything in order, and then hopefully then get promotion to Welsh League Division 2 then? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, they're restructuring, it, restructuring again. I don't really know the ins and outs. I'm trying not to get involved and get excited about this, that and the other. Mm. Whatever will be, will be. But we need to get our house in order. And, yeah. you know, if we can qualify for Tier 3 football next season and something happens and we can get in it, that's fine. If not, I'm happy to go again and we'll get there next season. Mm. So with um, with that in mind, it's like um, you mentioned uh, you, the club's got a new stand, you know, and they're doing what they're doing is they're, they're sort of selling or selling a sponsorship or something like that with the seats. And yeah. I saw the advertisements. And I thought, you know what, that, that, that's an old, that's a, a familiar club. That's my old club. Um, you know, I if Barry weren't playing, I definitely go and watch the Cardiff Drax. I'll, I'll put my name for it. And as soon as I put my name for it, first DM in, uh, Darren just messaged back. Now you mentioned it was Darren. Um, going, this is not Barry. This is kind of drugs. What are you doing? Nah, it's fair <laughs> enough. How's your dad? I'm thinking, who the hell is this? Yeah. I know they all know my dad, but who the hell? <laughs> Which yeah, one are you? Dar yeah, Darren knows you. Yeah, I've spoken to him. and He said he'd give you a bit of banter on the um, on the DMs. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, I mean, the committee, the committee of this football club are... Are, are brilliant. I gotta say, they're brilliant. Mm. They 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 say something and they keep their word. Um, the chairman, Dave, the chairman's Dave Rees, who's retired now. He used to own First Choice Motors. He sold that up um, last year sometime. So he's retired now. So his hobby and his life is the Drax. Mm. So he's the one. He's the one who makes things happen. But there's other people in the background. Paul Yanis, Mark Davis, you already mentioned, Nicky Driscoll. Um, Stevie Ames, all the committee boys and they all get things done which is brilliant and I know uh, Dave Harding's come on this year to the committee and I, it's, he's been at the pitch every day during the summer either painting or doing something like that um, I've, forgotten, I've forgotten one of the guy's names who's very important I'll get back to it, I'll remember it but um, <laughs> yeah I mean if, if we can do things like we have a weekly tote as well, which is yeah. a, a four number lottery thing. Um, a few years ago, it went up to 10 grand and a couple of the local uh, people at the club um, shared the jackpot. So that was brilliant. It went back into the community. Um, well, our tote's up to about two and a half grand now. So, you know, it, the more tickets that we sell each week, the more the club has money in the pot to, to improve the plane service or, or, to, or to fix you know, a tra or training, get training balls or whatever. You know, yeah. it's, self, it's a self-run club. Um, there are people who have um, borrowed the club money to get all the stand done and everything, so they've got to be paid back. So, you know, if we can sell all, of, all the seats to 
to people like you or people from the outside or people who come and watch us every week, then, you know, that's another bit of money back towards what people yeah. have laid out. And that's, that's brilliant. I think social media nowadays, I mean, we, I think we've sold 11 just by, by going on Facebook and advertising, which is brilliant. Yeah. And I think yeah. this would be hopefully the opportunity by doing this and getting it all out here. It'll be another boost as well. Yeah, totally. Exactly why I've, I said I agree to doing it, mate. To be honest, you yeah, know, I, did, I did my background research on you first. Oh, who's <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah. Who's yeah, this yeah. Reese? It's like he's all right. He's Dennis's boy. <laughs> yeah, all good. He's all good. He's a little shit, but don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean anything like seats, a sponsorship. Um, we've got a few local businesses, the Whitchurch Builders, um, give us decent money every year. You know, to supporters, um, local garage. I mean, first choice motors. I can go on and on. The more sponsorship yeah. that we can get, you know, my mate's company, Jones and Hargreaves. You know, they sponsor us, and they have we have boards around the pitch on match day. So it's getting to be a proper football club at the moment, and that's exactly what we wanted. And we want to go as high as we can. Simple yeah. as that. It's a it's a club in the heart of the city, and it should be. Yeah. It should, in my opinion, it should be fighting to to get as high as it can in Welsh in the Welsh pyramid. Yeah, no, no I, I completely agree with you. That's why I, I've offered my help just to get some put some money forward as well. Because um, if apart from Barry, if if say touch word, if Barry were to fall tomorrow, I'd always say I don't support the Drax. That that's always been me. That the Drax is. is your second club now. That's good enough for me. It is. It's good. It's good enough for. It's good enough for me, and it's uh, it's good enough for my dad. It's good enough for anyone. I think uh, Francie would be going. Really, <laughs> Francie? Yeah, I can imagine. He's he's, yeah. uh, he's he's bought a seat, David. Oh, and, he's uh, bought a seat. Yeah, I've heard he's bought a seat. seat. He's already he was... done a trial run. He's already he's already done Leighton Maxwell's Barmy Army echoing out. It's <laughs> quite loud. Yeah. yeah. No, it's um. Do you know what? He was the one that actually pushed me to get in a seat. He didn't convince me. He didn't message me anything. I just saw his name, and he purchased one of the seats. And I just went, I know Prancy, and fair play. If he's doing it, then I'll do it. Then you know. Yeah. Well, I think that's a... a bit of advice. If you do go on, get one away from him. <laughs> yeah, I know. He yeah, literally. I think, I think him and Paul Beard have got a seat right next to each other, so <laughs> I wouldn't go anywhere near them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I grew up around him so I think yeah I agree <laughs> <laughs> so anyway final question for you late um, for your playing career yeah in a couple of words how would you describe it um, hot 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 cold cold hot cold <laughs> <laughs> love it loving it and for the, the Cardiff Drafts, and I think you said completely enough about the club, but how would you describe the club in one simple word? Um, one word. Wow. Yeah. Exciting. Happy days. Can't fault you there, Lee. All right, Reece. Well, Leighton, thank you very much for coming on the Dragon's Voice podcast. It means so much. Thank you for doing this, and thank you for taking your time thank as you well. Know. I'll, uh, I'll leave up some advertisements as well for Cardiff Draft to know that uh, they're doing all the seats, uh, selling the seats, and they're doing some sponsors so we can get the club out there more for you and for the club as well. Perfect, so, mate. Brilliant. No worries. So thank, thank you for your time and all the best for, for the future, especially for Cardiff Draft and especially your golf, mate. Thank you very much, Reese. I hope to see you down there now. Oh, no, I will. Don't you worry. I will be down there. No problem. Nice one, Reese. See you, mate. Yeah.